Are you looking for good, clean fun? A game for the whole family? Something that is just casual, easygoing, pleasant on the eyes, and most of all, safe for your children to play? Let me tell you a little something about this game I haven't talked enough about. It's none of those things. Instead of all those pleasant things, this game is filled with nothing but red, bloody explosions of demon guts, frustrating yet exhilarating boss fights, and music that intensifies all of your rage and anger to maximum levels. This game would be Doom. Or, I like to call it, Hardcore Double Decker Demon Slaughter Extravaganza. For short, HC Triple DSE. For those of you gaming addicts, if you haven't played Doom at least once in your life, you probably still know of it. The game had a huge role in video game history as a whole. It started in 1993 in December as a project by id Software, the creators of the first Wolfenstein game, Wolfenstein 3D, which was a brilliant game if you're into the whole idea of fighting a preserved Hitler brain that functions a tremendous battle mech with Gatling guns for arms. It was a hit. id didn't stop there creating first-person classics like Quake, a fast-paced shooter that had a multiplayer deathmatch that pioneered esports from what was basically the beginning. But Doom has a rather interesting history. It started in 93, the game was supposed to be an alien first-person shooter. Yes, alien. Like the movie. But luckily that idea was turned over as the developers wanted to do something different, something groundbreaking, something that would get the people talking. And what better way to do that? than with hordes of demons and massive guns. id Software released the game as a share file and uploaded it to the University of Wisconsin's FTP servers and let people play it and share it with others. For those of you that don't know, an FTP server is a file transfer protocol, basically a data bank of documents that really anyone can access. Sharing the game like this really opened up the doors for Doom letting the players access the multiplayer game mode and share it with their friends for free. At the time, if you had a computer accessible to you, it probably had Doom on it. But once that game was ready to be shared, id Software didn't stop. Less than a year went by, and in September of 95, Doom 2 Hell on Earth came out, which was actually the first retailed version of the game. This is when they really cranked up the Doom franchise expectations. And by expectations, I really mean difficulty. People who don't enjoy Doom commonly bitch and moan about the level structure being confusing and hard to follow, but that's because this game wasn't made for the soft-hearted casual pansies that expect this game to be a walk in the park. When Hell on Earth came out, there were harder bosses to fight. The maps had a huge upgrade, adding secret areas, and it had this labyrinth-type structure to it that to this day frustrates players. But finding the keys, hidden rooms, and mysterious levers, and actually putting them all to use really gives a sense of satisfaction to a very red-toned game. Fast forwarding to the final Doom, which was published in May of 1996. This game kind of ended up being a letdown, thus forcing id Software to sell out to Midway Games, that way Midway Games could develop the next game of this massive saga under id Software's supervision, of course. So what was the next game in the Doom series? Well, that would be Doom 64. Just a fucking mess. I got a reminder of how rough this classic was when I attended Next Level Expo in Ames, Iowa, and I gotta play this gem of a shit show on an 8 inch tube TV. Having to play Doom with the dreaded single joystick that's mounted on the world's most uncomfortable controller alongside of the struggle of not being able to jump and no vertical variation to your crosshairs, this game was an honest blunder. That being said, it obviously didn't do well, especially with the lack of level creativity and the missing feel of the original Doom games. It felt like a step back from what was released prior to this. But just because that game wasn't the best, doesn't mean people didn't love to talk about it. Okay, okay. I said love to talk about it like everyone was saying good things about the glorious hardcore double-decker demon slaughter extravaganza. HC Triple DSE for short. But I could not have led you in a more polar opposite foresight. Because really, all of the concerned moms and dads cited this game in the debate of violence in video games and how it influences our youth. And you know that. When they found out that Doom, the game that included demons and heavy metal and big fucking guns, was played by none other than Eric Harrison, Dylan Klebold, the despicable Columbine shooters, 
It was turned into a predominant icon into the long legal battle that led to ESRB ratings. You know, kids, that rated M17 plus insignia on your Call of Duty case? Yeah, that's there for a reason. In fact, its software was actually involved in a lawsuit surrounding the Columbine shooting, but it was dismissed after it was explained that there is no way for anyone to know that Doom was the cause of this disgusting tragedy. So what happened next with Doom? Well, in 2004, Doom 3 was released, and it had an amazing story and great reviews. But being more story-driven, Doom 3 tended to play more like a Dead Space game, which was not out at the time. After Doom 3 was supposed to be Doom 4, but with a series of fuck-ups and shitstorms that led the way, there was no chance for Doom 4 to ever be released. Up until now, there were a few remakes and retries that really didn't grab the spotlight of its old Doom fans. Well, that is until 2016. 2016 was epic, with the holy grail of Doom games. This frustrating, mind-numbing, chaotic test of reflexes was released. Sure, there's a story to the new 2016 version of Doom. It's simple, really. You're the Doom Slayer, and you're locked away in hell, and you gotta kill these demons. But why are there demons? Well, scientists decided to open a portal to hell. Why'd they do that? Well, they wanted to siphon an unlimited supply of power, and along the way, something got discombobulated. And now the portals are open, and demons are roaming freely throughout the planet of Mars. And as the Doom Slayer, you travel between the red realms of Mars and hell, slaughtering demons. <sighs> Yes, I get it. It takes a stretch of imagination to grasp the concept of the story. But that stretch of imagination breeds a new title. The ultra-violent, hardcore, double-decker, demon slayer extravaganza. Or as I like to call it for short, UVHC Triple DSE. But, oh boy, do I fucking love this revamped Doom. The soundtrack has this savage feel, which the composer actually synthesized chainsaw sounds to make some of the hardest hitting, soul rumbling, adrenaline pumping scores ever to be created in a video game. It coincides synonymously with the brutal gameplay that 2016 Doom has to offer. The visuals are astounding, but I do recommend if you have epilepsy to be cautious when playing because it can be overwhelming at times. The story is, well, it's a story can't think too hard about it, but the gameplay doesn't really let you. It doesn't even have cutscenes, really. Mainly, it's just visual cues that you can choose to sit around and watch for about 30 seconds and then move on to the next demon slaying bloodbath that hides behind the next door. And I don't really mean to swing my dick around, but I do play an ultra-violent, the hardest difficulty. Why, you ask? To be honest, I have no fucking clue, but it adds a real challenge to beating the game. Boss mechanics that are frustratingly rigorous, and as soon as I mastered one mechanic, a totally different one is thrown at my face. I die and have to retry over and over and over and over again. But completing one of these beautifully rendered boss battles has no matching satisfaction. The fights are fast and exhilarating, you're constantly moving, repeating the five Ds of Doom. Dodge, duck, dip, Doom, and, uh, dodge. Ooh, ah, ooh. Nice try! Ah! Okay, okay, I'm gonna dodge these missiles. Oh, shit! Whew. Get ready for a big fucking gun! The most satisfying part of the battles you face? Oh, that's simple. Glory kills. Crush, smash, stab, slash, and blast those demon douchebags to smithereens! This game is revamped. If I were to compare it to another Doom, that would have to be Doom 2 Hell on Earth, but juice the hell up on some black market bull semen testosterone boosters. The levels have even more secrets. Classic Doom rooms, Doom Guy figurines, keys scattered throughout the maps, hidden weapon upgrades, and Doom Slayer upgrades. This game is an impeccable labyrinth to the tune of a beautiful symphony of destruction and gore. The multiplayer may be barren and kind of shit, 
but the campaign is what makes this game so fantastic, turning the player into a fine-tuned machine of destruction. But if your fancy isn't quite tickled yet, just you fucking wait. Because Doom Eternal was announced at QuakeCon this past August, and it is promising. Not because I'm looking forward to a story of what happens next in the Doom series, and not because they added a new feature that lets players be demons in other people's campaigns, but mostly because of the iconic Super Shotgun getting a massive upgrade. They put a fucking grappling hook on the end of it, and if that doesn't ignite a hellfire-ish flame that rumbles in your loins, well, then you might as well go back to playing some game created for some soft-hearted casual pansies that relies on the game's ability to spoon-feed you to the next level. Because Doom is clearly not for you. To wrap this thing up, I know I mention a lot in my past videos that a good story makes a good game, but this is an instant where I prove myself wrong, and I am positive that this is not going to be the only time that I do that to myself. But Doom is such a brilliant classic. It doesn't need a hard-hitting story to be great. It is a top-tier game simply because of its history, its individuality as a video game. The blood of these demons have stained the hands of so many generations of gamers, and it created a legacy in ultra-violent, hardcore, double-decker demon slayer extravaganza. A legacy that is imprinted on so many generations of gamers. Fuck this, I'm done.